Hey everyone, how you doing? Um, crazy stuff going on, right? With um, the um, uh, COVID-19 thing, COVID-19. Um, a uh, pastor, Rodney Howard Brown, um, was arrested for having a church service because of, um, you know, the COVID-19 and there were actually some Christians who were rejoicing over that. Um, I heard about stuff from him in the past um, about him being a false teacher and the whole the laughing revival thing, whatever. Um, so there were some Christians who were actually uh, happy about him being arrested. And I try to make the point that... Um, from the world's point of view, um, if they arrest a pastor, okay, with bad theology, um, what's to stop them from arresting a pastor with good theology in the future sometime because of some other reason or whatever? Yeah, so um, I think Christians um, sometimes don't use um, their heads and uh, think things through. Um In the Bible, I mean, we have, we see when God brings judgment, and um, that happens with disease and famine, and um, and we we read the prophets, and we know we know why God was doing those things. Um, we don't have, I don't believe that, you know, I believe that the canon is closed. So, but I mean, we, we can't say this isn't deserved. If you think about, um, the West right now, the, the, the state that it's in, the innocent blood that is um, being shed by abortion, um, the promotion and glorification of homosexuality and other sins, um, we see in Romans, one eighteen thirty two, um, verses um, verse eighteen. It says the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Um, we have Judges seventeen six. Um, people did what was right in their own eyes. We see um, Isaiah five twenty. People calling good evil and evil good. Um, we need to have a good understanding of uh, God's God's sovereignty. Um, there are some great books, and you know, Reformed Doctrine of Predestination by Lorraine Botner. Um, I'm reading this right now, Moody um, Handbook of Theology. I started reading it the other day. Um, I don't agree with everything in Wayne Grudem, like, you know, the prophecy of Agabus and his continualism, you know, that sort of thing. But there are some, uh, there's some good stuff in uh, Wayne Grudem's systematic theology. It's written on a kind of an, you know, easy to understand level um, than what's normal for a lot of uh, systematic theologies. Um, the chapter on uh, God's sovereignty, um, I think it's in 16, I think it's in chapter 16, uh, God's providence, chapter 16, fantastic, I would highly recommend that, but um, we, we really need to have a good understanding of God. Uh, God's sovereignty and how God works in the world. Um, things to keep in mind that God's in total control over everything that happens in history. Second Samuel 23, uh, 2. Uh, David said, The Spirit of the Lord spoke through me. His, words, his, his word was on my tongue. Uh, of course, uh, David uh, wrote scripture. Um, 2 Peter one twenty one says, No prophecy at any time 
was brought about by the will of man, but men spoke from God, being carried by the Holy Spirit. Second uh, Timothy three sixteen says all the NIV translates it the best. Um, the Greek word all Scripture is theanustos. Um, the Greek word literally means God breathed. Uh, having established that, we see um, God's examples of God's sovereignty uh, throughout the Bible uh, in so many places. I mean, just give a few. Uh, we see Samson's attraction to a Philistine woman was of God. Judges 14.4 4 says, However, his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord, for he was seeking an occasion against the Philistines. And where we have uh, personal injury law, injuries laws, in Exodus 21, 12 to 13, we see God's providence. Uh, it says, He who strikes a man so that he dies shall surely be put to death, but if he did not lie and wait for him, but God let him fall into his hand, then I will appoint you a place where he may flee. That's really interesting that God let him fall into his hand. Um we see in Exodus uh, 4.11, uh, when God spoke to Moses, the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or uh, blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Things we need to remember, um, those with a biblical worldview. Um, hold on. We see in um book of Amos um book of Amos um it's in uh chapter 3 book of Amos, um, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, um, in a series of rhetorical questions, um, hear this word which the Lord has spoken against you, sons of Israel, against the entire family which he brought up from the land of Egypt. You only have I chosen among all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquities. Do two men walk together unless they have made an appointment? Does a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Does a young lion growl from his den unless he has captured something? Does a bird fall into a trap on the ground when there is no bait in it? Does a trap spring up from the earth when it captures nothing at all? If a trumpet is blown in the city, will not the people tremble? If a calamity occurs in a city, has not the Lord done it? Yeah, that's difficult for a lot of people to accept because um, most people don't want to think about God's wrath and his judgment. And we see a lot more about God's wrath um, than we do about uh, his mercy. God speaks a lot more about his wrath. Jesus speaks more and more. He speaks more about hell than heaven. Um, we So things we should remember for those of us who have a, a biblical worldview, Isaiah 46 Um, 9 to 10. Where, um, the Lord said, Remember the former things long past, for I am 
God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times things which have not been done, saying, My purpose will be established, and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. So we need to keep in mind that nothing happens outside of God's decree. Um, we see Daniel uh, 4.35 um, All the inhabitants of earth of the earth are accounted as nothing but he, God, he does according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And no one can ward off his hand or say to him, Why have you, what have you done? Uh, we see the awesomeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.16 to um, verse 17. Uh, For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have, be, have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So this is not a God that um, takes, nothing takes him by surprise. Some, a lot of people don't want to accept the fact that God um, planned out everything that happens in history has been planned out by God and decreed by him before God create, created the world. We see in Ephesians in one uh, eleven. Um, also we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to his purpose who works all things after the counsel of his will we already saw what God said to Moses a child is not born malformed uh, by accident by some random thing that was outside of God's power God um, has decreed every event in history, predetermined it before the world was created. Um, we see powerful verses, so many verses about the judgment of God. We see in Job chapter 12 verses 23 to 24, uh, speaking about God, he makes the nations great, then destroys them. He enlarges the nations and leads them away. He deprives of intelligence the chiefs of the earth's people and makes them wander in a pathless waste. This is God doing these things. How many times have we seen in Scripture? All over the place. All over the place. Um, God bringing his judgment uh, using war and famine and plague. Um, and that sort of thing. Because, Romans 1, um, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And that's, that's pretty much um, why anyone rejects the gospel. They'll, you know, use any uh, excuse or, you know, grab onto any other philosophy out there, religion out there. It's all, it, it, Romans 1, God's revelation reveals to us, it's because people love their sin, and so they want to suppress the truth of God. Um, I push presuppositional apologetics because it's the most biblical uh, way to do apologetics. We And, you know, Acts 2, you know what? It says, know with certainty. And uh, so if we can have certainty, if the believer can have, if the believer can have certainty that um, uh, God's word is true, uh, then that is presuppositionalism right there. You, you, you can't take the, the methodology of the evidential approach. Um, I'm not talking about not using evidence. It's how you use evidence, but 
It's uh, you you can't live by that methodology if um, the Bible teaches that a believer can have certainty. But that's the whole other thing. Um, people, you know, wonder how can God allow um, something like you know, I mean, I'm, I've been hearing about earthquakes too, you know, and um, all the uh, prophecy nuts or you know prophecy people, sorry. Um, are you know going crazy with their dispensationalism, um, and I really won't get into that. But uh, some people are actually surprised or, or wonder, you know, how can God allow all that? You know, God is not merely allowing it; God has decreed it before He created the planet. He decreed it. Um. And so some people are, you know, it bothers them why God uh, would do this. So it's, it really is, it's amazing why God hasn't sent his whole creation into hell. If you actually understand how the God of the Bible judges people. James 2.10, if we break one of God's commands, we're guilty of the whole law and we all deserve hell. So if God gives us any less than hell he's giving us less than what we deserve um, if he saves anyone he's giving us what we don't deserve um, and of course uh, it's by um, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ not like a rabbit's foot you know it's not you know we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ he took the wrath of God for our sins on the cross he was um, raised from he died and he was raised from the dead if we confess with our mouth, believe in our heart, we're saved. Um, it's by faith alone, but the truly regenerated person is changed by the gospel because the Bible says if anyone's, who's in, if anyone's in Christ, they are a new creature. The old things pass away. Behold, the new things come. It is not a easy beliefism uh, sort of thing. Um, Jesus said in John 15, 14, you are my friends if you do what I command you. It's, it's not, um, we see uh, Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Um, we see um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, what is it, verses 9 to 10, um, there's lists of sins. And it says, people who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. People who don't repent of these things. Um, what's in that list? There's all, there's, there's all sorts of um, uh, sexual immorality, um, homosexuality. There's all sorts of sins. Um, we can't pretend to be a Christian and live in those sins because then we're uh, only deceiving ourselves. Uh, the Bible says uh, to not love the world or the things of the world. And what did Jesus say in Matthew 7, 21 to uh, 23? Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Um, God commands people to repent of their sins. Um, remember the woman in Revelation 2? She was, she was um, in sin, causing others uh, in the church to sin, and Jesus threatened her. He said that he would put her on a bed of sickness and kill her children unless she repents. So yeah, um, this is New Testament. This, um, you know, God is very serious about um, uh, His holiness and uh, people living right before Him. So, some things to consider. And um, yeah, it's 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 amazing to me that some people, you know, who would say that they're a Christian, would would think, why would God? Uh, they still say allow, but you know, if they actually read the Bible, they, you know, they would see that it's God doesn't merely allow 
he has decreed everything that comes to pass. Everything that happens in history, God has predetermined that. And he predetermined that, he decreed that before the world was even created. And the Bible is clear on that. And um, you can look at Ephesians, um, it's a number of places. I recommended some books. Christians really need to learn uh, to study theology. You need to study theology because uh, the church is in such a bad, you know, um, on an understanding level. Uh, I, I see most churches keeping their people on a baby, baby, baby level of the Bible, and it's so pathetic. And people who actually go to church for years and they're still on an infantile children's baby level of the Bible, it really, it makes me sick. And if you're a pastor doing that to your people, you, you really, you make me sick. And you're really not doing your job, and you're dropping the ball. And you're not really doing what's best for the sheep. You re you really aren't. You're very lazy. And, uh, you know, maybe you're worried because there's going to be more arguments because of doctrinal differences. Okay, well, yeah, that, that happens, you know. It has to happen, you know. You, you don't sacrifice truth to uh, keep the peace, you know. Um so we have to, um, we have some things to think about and just wanted to throw that out there.